Welcome to part one of my analog electronics series. Today I want to talk about a deceptively simple little circuit called the A-stable multivibrator. We've made one here, each LED lights up in turn, and it's a great little introduction to analog electronics because you can build it in a few minutes on a breadboard. However, I want to explain how it works because it's a little bit more complicated than it may first appear. So this schematic is a pretty standard A-stable multivibrator. I've chosen 1K current limiting resistors for the LEDs on a 9 volt supply and 4 to 7 microfarad caps. When you first apply power to this circuit, current flows through R3 and R4 into the base of Q1 and Q2, which are two transistors. The voltage at each transistor's base is about 0.6 volts, which is one diode drop above ground. However, we need to assume that neither of these two transistors are conducting yet. So, the voltage here is about 9 volts less the forward voltage of the LED and the same goes for this collector point here. Which means that each capacitor starts to charge up because there's about 0.6 volts here and we'll say for the sake of argument 9 volts here. We can assume that each of these capacitors charge up towards 9 volts. Eventually one of these two transistors will turn on. Theoretically both of them should turn on, but in practice only one of them will, because not all parts are created equally. Let's say that Q2 turns on first. Current now flows through the LED, through the current limiting resistor, and out of the emitter of Q2. Because Q2 now conducts, the voltage of this collector is now 0 volts. Remember earlier we charged this capacitor to 9 volts, which now means that the voltage of the negative place of the capacitor is now minus 9 volts because the positive is connected to 0. So with minus 9 volts at the base of the Q1 transistor, Q1 is now turned hard off. It doesn't conduct. This means that the voltage of the collector of Q1 is now 9 volts with respect to ground and the voltage at the negative terminal of the capacitor is now 0.6 volts. So this capacitor starts to charge up. In the meantime, C1 also starts to discharge through R4. which means that the voltage at its negative plate starts climbing up towards 0 volts and will eventually pass the 0.6 volt turn on voltage of the transistor Q1. At this point Q1 now starts to conduct. The C2 capacitor now starts to charge up from minus 9 volts through ground and to the 0.6 volt turn on voltage of Q2 and at that point Q2 turns on, thereby switching Q1 hard off. The cycle then repeats. This concludes part 1 of my analog electronics series. Look out for part 2 next week and please subscribe to my channel if you liked it. Thanks for watching, see you next week.